Coal mine bombings kill three and injure five. The Interior Minister of Ukraine reported that three civilians were killed and at least five others injured when two coal mines in the town of Toretsk, located in the Donetsk region, were bombed by Russian aircraft on Thursday. The area surrounding one of the Toretsk mines was bombed twice. The minister, Aya Klimenko, announced the news on Telegram Messenger, saying that one person was murdered and two others were injured. Despite being rescued, 32 miners stayed underground due to a power outage. According to Klimenko, two individuals were killed and three others injured when Russian explosives detonated on a separate mine. Administrative facilities and machinery were destroyed. According to the Office of the General Prosecutor, the ages of the victims were 41, 42, and 45. Air strikes in Ukraine have killed dozens of people since Russia poured in tens of thousands of troops in February 2022, but the country denies targeting civilians on purpose. War victims should be assisted by legalizing medicinal marijuana. After thousands of Ukrainians suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD) as a result of the conflict with Russia, the country's parliament decided to legalize medicinal marijuana. With 248 votes in favor and 401 against, the new legislation will be implemented in six months and permits the use of cannabis for both scientific and industrial purposes. The voting took place in Kiev's parliament. At this time, we do not have the complete tally of the votes. Prime Minister Denai Smihal introduced the bill. Ukrainians have long pondered the pros and cons of medicinal marijuana's potential legalization. Opponents of medical marijuana legalization in Ukraine voiced concerns that the drug trade would flourish once the medication became available to patients, while proponents of the medicine pointed to its many health advantages. The full-scale invasion of Ukraine by Russia on February 24, 2022, gave the discussion fresh impetus. Disastrous civilian sites around the nation have been targeted by the Kremlin's forces on many occasions using heavy missiles, anxiety and stress are thought to be affecting a large number of people. Ukrainian mobilization gains momentum. Since the conflict with Russia shows no signs of abating anytime soon, Ukraine's defense minister, Rustam Humorov, has stated that his nation intends to enlist citizens residing outside. Ukrainians of military age will be requested by Mr. Yumarov to report to armed forces recruiting centers, according to the German publication Die Welt. The Ukrainian army has recently said that an additional 500,000 troops must be mobilized. It has 500,000 troops, according to The Independent, with 200,000 serving actively. According to the Ukrainian army's proposal, the overall number of personnel would reach around 1 million if the data were true. Russia under Putin is a real and constant danger. When visiting British forces stationed near the Estonian border, Sergei Astama spoke about the danger posed by Russia. The United Kingdom and its allies, he added, need to be prepared, we need to deter, in reaction to Moscow's moves. Aware of the danger that Russia poses to Europe, the United Kingdom, and its citizens, the Labour leader continued, I believe we have to be mindful of that threat. An actual and ongoing danger from Russia, measured in years, and measured back home in the UK as well, was his warning, he added. Along with Sir Keir, Shadow Defence Secretary John Healy lauded British forces for their role in defending NATO's eastern border. Over 50% of intercepted Russian missiles, Following yesterday's drone strike, in which 34 out of 35 drones belonging to Putin were shot down by Ukraine, the Ukrainian Air Force said today that over 25% of Russia's missiles fired since September have been intercepted. While Ukraine has strengthened its defenses against Iranian-made drones, the numbers reveal that the country is still susceptible to missile assaults. In response, President Zelensky has called for further financial aid to put an end to the attacks. Visual documentation of drone assault damage Damage to a warehouse in the Kiev region after Russian drones attacked it overnight is seen in pictures supplied by the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. From 8 p.m. until 3.30 a.m., Iran fired 35 missiles, 
34 of which were allegedly shot down by the Ukrainian Air Force. Russia has tight relations with the North Korean government. Russian officials have announced ongoing strategic alliances with China and India and have announced comprehensive defense cooperation with North Korea, according to Reuters reporting out of Moscow. Russian President Vladimir Putin held a summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in September, and Defense Minister Sergei Shugu visited North Korea in July, according to the agency. Legislators in South Korea said that Russia had assisted Pyongyang in launching a surveillance satellite a month ago, and the US and its allies have expressed worry that Kim may supply Russia with weapons and ammunition to replenish its stockpiles used in the conflict in Ukraine. The path toward forming an all-encompassing strategic alliance with India and China remains unchanged. Gerasimov stated in his year-end message that active, comprehensive cooperation has been established with the DPRK, an official acronym for North Korea. Hundreds of Russian drones are shot down by Ukraine. In a massive nocturnal strike over 12 areas of Ukraine, the Russian military fired 35 drones. Today, the Ukrainian Air Force claimed to have shot down 34 of them. According to a statement from the Russian Air Force, Iranian-made shard drones were fired by Russia in multiple waves between 8 p.m. and 3.30 a.m. For hours, several districts in the center, southeast, and north of Ukraine were under air alert. No serious injuries or property damage have been reported as of yet. Ukraine receives a financial boost from Germany. Concerned that a reduction in foreign funding could lead to a scaling back of military operations in Ukraine, Germany has just approved an extra 88.5 million euros, 96.89 million dollars, to fortify the energy infrastructure of the country in the face of Russian attacks. In a joint statement on Thursday, the German ministries of foreign affairs and economics announced the money. According to the announcement, the Energy Support Fund for Ukraine would receive 54.3 million euros from the Economy Ministry through the state-owned bank KFW and 34.2 million euros from the Foreign Ministry. This comes after Ukraine issued a warning about the consequences of the US financing standstill. Earlier this month, the US Congress vetoed a £47 billion defense package. Additionally, a financial aid plan worth £43 billion was vetoed by Hungary last week.